Welcome back to Franbo. We need to find the wizard in the mountain to turn us back into our human form. But uh, before that, I think we need to get a feel for this place. Look around town. Look at the pretty flowers. Look at the giant strawberries. Oh my god, I really want to eat those. They look delicious. Mm. They look so tasty. But I think I won't eat right now. The throne of the king. I wonder if it's comfortable. I wonder why kings are always sitting. Oh, I love paper swirls. These are huge. I wonder why they have them. Maybe the wind requires them. To show how strong it is. Oh, these flowers are huge. Look at that view. Oh, I see many clouds. Are those flying boats? But how? Maybe I'm imagining things. Or not. No, no. You can't get in. It's closed. Sorry, I just wanted to see what's behind this passage. Well, the library, of course. But it's closed. Come back in fall or winter. Then it will be open. Hey, aren't you the talking tree I took to see Palantros? Yes, that's me. Palantros gave me arms and legs. Yes, and also a head. That's very positive. <laughs> yes. But why is the library closed, sir? Well, that's logic. As the sun goes round the second moon of Athirsta, we open. Only then, the real knowledge will be learned. And that only happens in fall and winter. Oh, so you don't learn anything while you're in summer or spring? Of course we learn. We learn all the time. I'm learning now. That you like to ask many questions. Well, I'm curious, that's why. Everything looks so different here in Athirsta. I guess you're not from around here. Well, I hope to see you soon. Yes, thank you, sir. Bye. Wait, so does this guard beetle just guard the entrance to the library for months and months on end? <laughs> Until the right season comes around? That's, uh... That's very, very strange. I wonder if I'm going to have to find a way into the library. Hmm. Maybe if I went into there, I could learn the location of the mountain or something like that. Oh, hey, I totally forgot to read the journal. Ugh, bloody faces. I found myself hunting the truth, but finding the unexpected. I found what my senses couldn't show me. I found the truth that relays silently in the unknown. One of the thousand. Hmm, many faces. This looks intriguing. Are the faces crying blood? 1908. My name is... Leon. It's probably pronounced Leon or something like that, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna say Leon. I'm currently 92 years old, and living alone in a little house far away from the city. I have to admit, I never was fond of jewelry, houses, or clothing. Since childhood, I always talked to animals, plants, and insects, and even though I never got a response, I never quit. If you are reading this, maybe it's because you are looking for answers. Maybe you can see things that others can't, or you can feel what others avoid. You can listen to the silence, and become one with everything. Mr. Leon is old and he seems sad. Yeah. Maybe you can see things that others can't. Oh yes, that sounds a lot like me. Interesting.
1875. This entry is actually older than this one. This one was 1908. This one's 1875. I can't stop it. I can't control it. I see the black shadows everywhere. The blood, the messages, the screaming, all the pain. I can't figure out why this is happening to me. The black shadows. I can see them too. They're everywhere. Cry because it hurts. 1875. I had a vision. I'm still breathing fear. I feel at war with my own mind. One of the shadows came down from the sky. I thought it was an angel. Its name is Ramor, Prince of Darkness, from the Fifth Reality. It talked to me, played with me, and showed me all the terrors. It told me that I was the key to its existence. Inside my head, the Stone of Wisdom. The monster's making other people sick, too. Inside my head, the Stone of Wisdom. 1876. I can see myself around. The other me. Tell me lies. Talks about all the pain and suffering in my life. The other me. Wants me to commit suicide. He smiles while pronouncing the words. Kill yourself. And I have tried, hypnotized by his words, but there is always something saving me at the end. It must be the love to live. Poor Mr. Leon. I like the drawings, though. I meet a shadow. For the first time, it talked to me. Their race is called the Kamalos. They hunt weakness and pain. I asked it about the possession of human bodies, and it said, We are born and feed from fear, and the uncontrolled illness of human mind. We are invisible to them, but our existence grabs every single living cell of the body until the end. After that, it started raining, and it walked away from me leaving a black oily path after it. I believe water may purify them. Hmm. Water may purify them. I wonder if that's why the sisters were on an island, surrounded by water, to protect themselves from the Kamalas. After seeing the Kamalas reacting to water, I thought of trying a little experiment. Last night, I encountered something amazing. The Kamalas transform into a new kind of creature when exposed to water. The metamorphosis was painful to watch. After the terrible screaming, the Kamalas calmed down and started to cry on the ground. It felt like the pain was disappearing. After a few minutes, a bright and peaceful being was rising in front of me. They melt like wicked witches in fairy tales. Aw, peaceful creatures. It felt like the bright creature could read my, read my thoughts. I thank you for waking me up. I was suffering. I must go where I belong. Ithirsta awaits. All Velakis must go there after waking up. If you wish to see the light, come with me. You have the key. It said. I didn't answer. After a while, it faded away. Hmm. Read thoughts. I think that's a bit scary. I guess we're always afraid of things we can't understand. I was reading my writings to see if I'm missing something. I recall Ramor. Or Ramor? Ramar? I'm going to say Ramar. Ramor? Let's go with Ramor. Let's go with that. Sure. <laughs> I recall Ramor from the fifth reality. If there is a fifth reality, there must be at least four more. I was thinking that a Thirsta may not be a city in this world, but a reality by itself. I wish all answers came to me. 
I deeply regret the fact that I didn't accept the Velakas invitation. Since I saw the Velakas, I keep seeing this diagram spinning in my head in a single sentence. Time is the rhythm of your perception. I got a visit from my son, Brian. I told him about the things that I've seen, but he didn't want to hear and left. I don't blame him. I understand that the reality presented before my eyes is invisible to most people. I wish I could find a friend just like me, because my son, he thinks I'm insane. My body and mind are beginning to understand the pattern. Life becomes quite easy to control when you cut all social laws and only apply our reality laws because they're not only laws, but also behaviors. Chemical behaviors. Natural laws. Without those behaviors, without those laws, we wouldn't exist. Sometimes I wish to be a leaf on the ground, calm while dying. I think I have to study some chemistry to understand what he means. It can be fun to understand how we are built and such. Last night, after the storm, a huge creature visited my garden for a few seconds and then disappeared. I found a strange bottle with a pink liquid inside in the same spot the creature landed. I can't fully understand the contents of the bottle. I have found red blood cells in it, and bacteria not yet recognized. The bacteria seems to get rid of unusual behaviors in any kind of living creature. I poured some of the pink liquid on a dying plant, and it bloomed after a few minutes. I cut my finger to test the liquid with human tissue, and it cured it after a few seconds. This bacteria may work as platelets and white blood cells, but at a very high speed. Aw, what creature can that be? Oh, I think we know the creature. Oh, it's a bunch of Mr. Midnights. I dream of thousands of black cats surrounding my house. Big yellow eyes staring at my sleep. Wow, I love the pictures. Many kittens in many colors. Beings in the Thirsta are varied, from roots to giant insects. Roots are the first in this reality. Insects came later. I learned their language and numerology. Hmm. I am going to need this at some point soon, probably. To uh, translate things. Yeah, that's their alphabet. The Great Philokis is the beginning of the first reality. Prime Eve. Light. Velocus shield. And a friendly alien, saying, hey, what's up? The Velocus body structure is quite different from ours. They're made out of photons and sound waves. They're also both male and female. When the youngster reaches age 299,792,459, they're crowned with the shield. <laughs> okay, so, uh... I see they live a little while. A couple years, a little bit more than humans. Are those letters? They sound funny. Oh, I like the mask. I guess they call it shield. <laughs> Indeed, that is old. Zyre. Creation of the Great Velakas. King of Athirsta. Second reality. Life. Being in Athirsta feels like becoming what you can't understand on Earth. It's where leaves sing while falling off the tree, and the water whispers its wisdom while you drink it. Ah, oh, beautiful creatures. I love them. Pandora. Creation of the five realms of essential existence. Free. <laughs> Resides in the human world. Third reality. Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. Consciousness. Practice of will. 
Center Sidi. The end of vibration, when both ends of opposites are the same degree, resides in third and fourth reality. Death. Mabuku is the end of light. Oh, not Mabuku, but Mabuka. Mabuka. Wow, many heads. That creature must spend a lot of time thinking. <laughs> I guess so. Mother Mabuka is letting me go. I've spent 15 days here in Mabuka's den, and I'm tired. I don't need to hide from pain anymore, because it's part of me. It feels like love is everywhere, and in everything. I enjoy crying. I enjoy laughing. I enjoy being alive. If dark things from the dark are so dark, how do they find each other? Maybe they like it dark, because they're so ugly. And they're so ugly that they prefer not to see each other. No date recorded. I'm getting ready for the journey back home. Mabuka sent me to the endless limits of Mabuka's den, and I'm waiting for the Luciferns. I had to become friends with them, or to be more precise, become one of them. Luciferns gather in filaments, that's why they look like they're growing hair, and the big face is mostly for communication purposes, and to scare their predators. I hope my body can survive the journey. Oh, those are the, uh, yeah, the things I, I freed. I combed their hair so that they could escape, and got the key from them. Gravity collects particles to create new ones. It's a creative force, and with creativity, evolution is inevitable. Hmm. When there's big chunks missing. What is this? The drawing to the left looks like an antenna. Oh no. Somebody ripped off the rest of the book. I'll never know what happened to Mr. Leon. Hmm. Alright, I'm definitely going to need that book pretty soon. Wow. This is a bit scary, but it's so beautiful. Hey, another massive beetle. <laughs> Look at this. We're like on a, on a honeycomb or something. That's so cool. Hello, sir. Are you a guard? Yes. Oh, I see. Do you know where the mountain Kotrem is? Yes. Can you tell me where it is? Yes. Uh, well, tell me, please. Hmm... The mountain Kotrim is only in wintertime. Oh, come on. <laughs> Not only can I only enter the library in certain seasons, but the mountain only exists in certain seasons? What? Wintertime? What are you talking about? Mmm, of course. Wintertime. What do you think? But I can't wait for wintertime. Oh, you don't wait for it. You go there. Go? Oh. But how? Ah, sorry, but I'm no good at explaining things. Go down the stairs and then straight. You'll find a clockmaker. He can explain things, I think. He tried with me before. Alright, thank you, sir. Hmm, so it sounds like we maybe just enter winter time. We enter whatever time we want. Okay, so I could probably translate this if I wanted to. Oh, wow. I don't understand. It's the tree symbol, but I wonder what it says. I can always ask. That's true, but, uh... Hmm, what if I... Oops. Oh, I can't actually use it on something. Huh. <laughs> I, I mean, I suppose I could translate it by hand, right? But that would take a really long time. Yeah. 
Let's just take a look at that again. I mean, even if I translated it, it wouldn't be translated into English words, right? So, yeah, I don't think there's any need for that. I wonder what kind of stones these are. They look like crystals. Very shiny. Oh, so many fish. They seem to be in a hurry. Where are you all going? Are you going home? I wish I could go home too. I wonder if I can catch one. I don't have a net or anything like that right now. It's so cool to have Mr. Midnight with me. Ah, oh, so this is the whole island. Okay, there's where I just came from. There's the home of Palantros. Massive tree, some windmills, a boat. Uh, that's gotta be the mountain, right? Kotrim? It's the only mountain around here. A mountain? I think that's the castle. It's Palantros' home. A very big tree. Beautiful paper swirls. An island. And a boat. I wonder if it says the Thirsta there. It must be. Probably. Oh, simple enough. Don't need to translate that. Food that way, mountain that way, and back to the library that way. Okay, well the person said to get everything explained to me, go straight. So let's go straight. Oh my god! That's so cute! Look at that! Look at that little kid! Little kid tuber. Oh no, where'd she go? Where did she go? She went off this way, but I don't see her anymore. Oh, look at all the bug people! They're so cool! Look at how buff this dude is! Strengthening those roots every day. Oh, there she is again. Look at that little bug cart thing. Hello. Ah, who is there? Who? Oh, are they blind? Their eyes do seem rather kind of milky. Kind of white. Me, Fran. Can't you see me? Oh, now uh, I see a little... You have four eyes. Wow. Four eyes? I don't have... Uh, what are you selling? Only the very best plobus of this entire land. Do you want to smell it? Sure. They look like coconuts. It's poo, miss. Poo that I collect. They're not coconuts. <laughs> poo? Like in the toilet? Wow, I, I thought it was really bad to eat poo. Bad? Why? It's very yummy. We love it here. It makes everything grow and shine. <laughs> I have to get going now. Good luck with the plopus. Bye. Yeah, I mean, they are insects and, you know, plants, so shit would actually be pretty good food for them. <laughs> oh, what a tiny shop. And it smells really funny. I bet it does. Greetings. Are you interested in fabric and thread? I have some. Out of curiosity, miss, for what purpose do you use fabric? Everybody's naked. Well, whatever you need it for. We also have thread for making other things. I see. Hmm. I have to go, miss. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs> yeah, none of them are wearing clothes, are they? Huh. Thread and cloth to make stuff. There's a lot of fabric in the box. Whoa. The piece of metal looks grand. Maybe it's called... Heavy Metal. <laughs> because it's heavy and it's metal. 
Hello, I'm Fran. What are you doing? Good day. I'm Pruder, and I'm molding this piece of iron. Oh, for what? I have to deliver a few clock pieces to the clockmaker. Oh, I see. So you can do all kinds of metallic stuff. Sure. If you have some ideas, we can talk about them, and padam, I'd do it. That's very good to know. Thank you, sir. Well, I have to keep working, but if you need my services, you know where I am. Okay, if I need anything constructed, go to him. Gotcha. So if I need shit, go to you. If I need something metallic made, go to you. And if I need fabric, go to you. Alright, where's this clockmaker? Ah, there you are. Oh my god. It's a caterpillar. The ladybug has really huge melons. They look juicy. Wait. Ladybug? What? That's not a ladybug. Mmm. Fresh and juicy pineapples. Baby roots. You're gonna get eaten. Oranges give me a headache. Hello, miss. I think you have beautiful fruits. Thank you, dear. Would you like some? Oh, no. I'm on a mission to go back home, and I want to be hungry when I get there. Oh. So, from what part of Athirsta are you? Are you from outside the island? No, I'm not from Athirsta at all. I'm a human. Oh, a human. That's new. Well, I hope you complete your mission. Thank you, miss. I certainly will. See you. What a lovely stand with many clocks. <laughs> a cuckoo clock. How pretty. Many cogs inside this one. Tick-tock goes the clock. Hello. What are you doing? Mmm, working. On my clock. Oh, I see. Uh, sir, do you know where I can find the great wizard? No, miss. I do clocks. I fix clocks. I listen to clocks. Tick-tock. Mm, and do you know where the mountain Kotrim is? And the mountain Kotrim only exists in winter time. Otherwise, it's just a regular mountain. I, I can't wait for winter. The king said that the wizard would be in mountain Kotrim. You don't need to wait for winter to come. That's absurd. Time is an infinitely layered reality. Oh, a uh, layered reality? That sounds great. What should I do then? Go to the big clock and change the season. Just change it. Where's the clock? Well, uh, go towards the castle, but turn to your left when you see the stairs. You'll find a big clock on the tree. Good luck. Thank you, sir. You're very nice. Bye. Well, I could go do that, but before that, I want to keep taking a look around. Let's get a feel for this place. Get a feel for a Thirsta. A bench to sit on when you're old and want to feed the birds. <laughs> I love that, that she associates benches with old people sitting down and feeding the birds. <laughs> oh, to carry heavy things. Thirsta's newspaper. How beautiful. It looks like they have only good news. Hello, lady. Is there any news? Good day. Would you like to read the newspaper? Uh, I can't read a thirst. Uh, hmm. What is the Thirsta's language called? Don't you know? It's called a Thurnish. Are you a tourist? <laughs> yeah, I'm a tourist. My name is Fran. I've never seen a tourist before, and I've never seen a Fran either. Welcome to Athirsta. I hope you'll have fun here. Thank you so much. I have to go now. Bye. <laughs> Giant snail playing chess. 
<laughs> Whoa, look at that bag of gold. Oh my god. Oh, is that a little tuber baby with like a cowboy hat on? Mmm, delicious fruits and vegetables. Hello, little root. You're so cute. Oh, thank you. You're cute, too. <laughs> I'm Fran. And you? Me? Uh, no, I'm not Fran. Uh, I'm Zelma. And I want to sing all day long. <laughs> What's your favorite song? My favorite song goes like this. Uh, I would sing that, but I have no idea what the melody is. Uh, hmm. And I don't remember any more than that. Uh, why do I feel like this is a code I need to know or something? I learned that at school. It's fun. Oh, that sounds very mathematical. I have to go now. You have brutal, beautiful fruits, by the way. See you. I feel like that might be a code, because this is an adventure game, but I think it's just a little... Yeah, just a little school counting thing. Counting exercise. But if I need a code, I'm coming back, kid. I'm coming back. A boat ready to depart. Up and beyond. Oh yeah, I guess these are flying boats. These must be extraordinary boats, with special abilities. Hello? Is anybody in there? I guess not. A lot of wood. Maybe they will become a boat someday. Good day, sir. Good day, little creature. I've seen flying boats, sir. How does that work? Uh, think about them floating on water, but instead of water, it's air. It's so simple. And could I borrow one of your boats to fly away? I want to go home. Oh, go home? I see. Uh, sadly, these boats only work with a Thurstonies. Huh, I see. Well, thank you, sir. Have fun making your boat. Hello. Good day, young one. What are you doing? The war is about to start, and I can't see meaning in the meaningless. Huh? What do you mean? Join me, young one. You'll be rewarded with one golden coin if you come back alive. Join you? Join you where? The game is about to begin. You are the Kamalos. I am the Velakis. Black and white. As shadows and light. Is this a sort of board game, sir? Yes, a board game. Let's immerse in this adventure. You against me. I give you a coin if you win, eh? What do you say? Yeah, sure. What are the rules? First to place three of the same figures in a diagonal, horizontal, or vertical line wins. Oh. <laughs> That's a much less creative game than I was expecting. We toss the machinery and see who begins. Are you in? Uh, sure, it sounds like a game we used to play at school called Tic-Tac-Toe. But why would you just give me the, give me the gold if I win? Time is gold, and I'm very old. I've been around a long time. I just want to have a good time. I see. Well, let's play. Hmm. Looks like I go first. I don't know if there's any special strategy to winning Tic-Tac-Toe. It's been so long since I played. Mmm, that's gonna be a tie. Again. Once again, it's a tie. Hmm. 
Is this always going to be a tie? Oh, here we go. I got you. I win. Hmm, should I keep playing? What if I win twice? Do I get two golden coins? How many golden coins do I need or want? I don't know. Let's just keep going. Oh, I should have started in a corner, right? Yeah, I think I already screwed myself. It even really matters where I put my stuff. It feels like totally pointless. There we go. Very well done, little creature. You are a master. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't matter how many times you win. Oh, no, I have two golden coins. Okay, so it actually does count them. I guess if I need to buy something and it has a certain price, then uh, I might have to come back and play tic-tac-toe. Here, kid. Want some money? Aw. Hey, kid. Take a look at this exterminator card. No. Okay. I wonder if I can just give the money to a shopkeeper and, and get stuff. Don't need anything from this shop. Okay. Alright, let's go take a look at this clock. Here we go. I'm guessing changing the season is not going to be something super simple, right? There's going to be a trick to it, right? It'd be way too easy. This is a very odd clock. Where are the numbers? It has symbols and colors, but it doesn't seem to show the time. Well, I guess the time works differently here in Athirsta. Mm, there's the lever. Mm, let's not change it just yet, though. Oh my god, this place is so huge! Look at how big this place is! It's so beautiful. Is that two moons? I would like to borrow that boat. Wow, the lake's water is very clear. I wonder why there's no fish in there. Maybe they just don't like this water. Hey, Mr. Midnight, how you doing? Oh, kitty, this land is very different. Do you understand the language already? Yes, I actually understood what the guard told you. I hope we find the clockmaker soon so we can go to Mountain Coatroom. Oh, we already did, friend. Let's see, how far does this go? Oh my god, this is... wow. It just keeps going and going. Okay, let's try to change it while we're here. Oh, it sounds like something broke. <laughs> of course, I knew it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But how does it work? Huh. Oh. I don't know. Maybe I can ask for help. Yeah, I probably should go talk to the clockmaker. Do I have anything that could fix it? Like a gear or something? Nah. It has symbols and colors. Wanna make sure I'm not missing any hotspots on it? No, it looks like just the lever and the main thing. Okay, let's go back to the clockmaker. Sir, I have a little problem. Mm, yes. I don't have any. The big clock on the tree, it's broken. I can't make it work. Please help me. A broken clock? That's a disgrace. Poor clock. You have to help me. 
please fix it for me. I beg you, I have to go home. I never fix a clock for nothing. Otherwise, my life's time goes to waste. What do you mean? I charge one big golden coin per clock. Time is gold, you know. Here, sir, your golden coin. Oh, yes, but you have to offer me the job first, all right? Do it and be polite. Oh, sir clockmaker, would you like to fix my clock? In exchange for this piece of gold and in the name of, uh, time? I beg of you, accept my offer. Of course. That was an incredible job offer. Very passionate. Great. Let's go to the big clock and fix it. <laughs> oh, I love how they all look. They look so cool, don't they? Hmm. You were right. The clock is broken. You can fix it, right? Of course. Just a second. Uh-oh. Hmm, yes. Hmm. Oh. There. What is it? It seems that somebody was playing a dirty game around this clock. What do you mean? I mean, somebody broke it. It's immoral. Breaking a defenseless clock. Ah. Why would somebody break it? Kamalas, Winter, Mountain Cotrim, The Stones. Many reasons, miss. Oh, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Kamalas, the evil darkness. They they work for Ramor, the terrible black. And Kamalas are the only ones allowed into this land. The only evil we have around. It wouldn't surprise me. Ramor wants the stones. But what I don't understand is... For what purpose? Those stones are meaningless for him and his kingdom. And the stones are in winter time. Is Ramor a giant black monster with a goat mask? Uh, a dead goat mask? Yes. You know him? Yes. I think it's because of him I'm in this land. I'm a human, you know. Oh, a human. Now I understand. I also need the stones. They're my way back home. I hope it's not too late. <laughs> that is why you need to go into wintertime and go to Mountain Cotrim. Yes, exactly. I have to talk with the Great Wizard and borrow the stones. Hmm. Well, it's fixed now. I'll give you something that will make it easy for you. Here. It's a remote control for the clock. You will be able to travel into all four seasons in just a quick turn. But it's just a prototype, so it may not work if you're too far away. And remember, time is an infinite layered reality, so be careful. I'll be careful. Thank you very much. You're a very nice clockmaker guy. Please, call me Cogwind. Alright, Mr. Cogwind. I'm Fran, by the way. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> That's such an awesome name, Cogwind. And look at the smile left on Fran's face. <laughs> She's just like frozen in a state of happiness. Okay, cool. So we basically have like the same thing as the pills, right? Except we can change seasons. And we can also change into multiple, like uh, a lot more states than just the pills. The pills just allow you to change between one state and then back, but this allows you to change between four different states. That's going to make things very, very interesting. That's going to make me have to think, like, really differently about puzzles, too. Like, well, let's go test it. I'm guessing, what if I turn it to winter time? That would freeze the water, right? Yeah, and now you can walk on it. Although there's no reason to, I guess. Oh my god, the snow, look at it. It looks so good. I love the art in this game. such a cool device. This game is so good. It's so good. Uh. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. 
So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.